Hello and welcome to today's presentation. My name is Thomas Gallagher. I am a data engineering graduate working for Salesforce and will be presenting an overview of the company's financial position and projects. To do so, I'll be comparing Salesforce to one of its major competitors in the market, Oracle. For those unaware, much like Salesforce, Oracle is a database software company who also have a focus on data analytics and artificial intelligence solutions. I'll be going through both companies' balance sheets and statements of operations to show some important financial figures before calculating the market capitalization of both companies and some key financial ratios in terms of both companies' liquidity, leverage, profitability, and market value. So first looking at the assets. Our company's current assets total $15,963 million and our fixed assets total $39,163 million, bringing our total assets to $55,126 million. In contrast, Oracle's current assets add to $52,140 million, whilst their fixed assets sits at $63,298 million. This brings its total assets to $115,438 million. Both companies have similar current liability numbers with Salesforce at $14,845 million and Oracle at $17,200 million. However, Oracle's fixed liabilities are a lot more than Salesforce's, a massive $85,521 million compared to $6,396 million. Altogether, this means that Salesforce's total liabilities add to $21,241 million, whereas Oracle's adds to $102,721 million. Moving on to the equity, which can of course be calculated by subtracting the total liabilities from the total assets. In the case of Salesforce, this equity comes out to be $33,885 million, almost three times as much as Oracle's $12,717 million in equity. Although Oracle has more than double the total assets of Salesforce, we can see that their liabilities equal almost five times more than Salesforce's, resulting in a much lower equity. Salesforce's revenue for the financial year ran to $17,098 million, with the two major revenue streams coming from subscriptions and support and professional services. Our expenses totaled $16,819 million, which was calculated by adding the cost of revenue, operating expense and other expense. Our two major expense categories were marketing and sales and subscription and support. In comparison, Oracle's total revenue came to $39,068 million, with their two major revenue streams being their cloud services and license support, as well as their cloud and on-premise licenses. Oracle's expenses totaled $25,172 million, with the two major expenses being sales and marketing and research and development. Salesforce has far fewer shares on offer than Oracle, with currently 910 million outstanding shares in comparison to Oracle's 3.01 billion. However, our current share price sits at 247.78, bringing our market capitalization to over $225 billion. This is quite a bit more than Oracle, whose lower share price of 58.96 brings its market capitalization to $177 billion. So with those financials out of the way, we're going to take a look at some important calculations which will allow us to better understand how Salesforce compares with Oracle. The current ratio is calculated by dividing the current assets by the current liabilities. As can be seen, although our 1.0753 ratio means that we are able to pay off our current liabilities with current assets, it is not quite as reassuring as Oracle's 3.0314 ratio. The second ratio is the debt ratio, which indicates the relative amount of a company's assets that are provided by debt and is calculated by dividing the total liabilities by the total assets. As can be seen, Salesforce's 0.3853 debt ratio is much lower than Oracle's 0.8898 ratio, indicating that we are much more comfortable to pay our debts. The next equation is the return on equity ratio, which is calculated by dividing the company's net income by the shareholder's equity. This ratio looks at how efficiently a company is using its assets to generate profit, and unfortunately, Salesforce's ratio of 0.0037 is extremely low compared to Oracle's 0.7970 due to our low net income when compared to Oracle. The final equation I'll be showing is the book value per share ratio, which is the per share value of a company based on the common equity available, and is measured by dividing the common shareholder's equity by the total shares outstanding. Salesforce's ratio of 37.2363 is quite a ways higher than Oracle's 4.2250 due to our larger equity and fewer shares. And that is all for the overview of Salesforce and how it compares against a similar company in the market. Please feel free to review the additional slides provided, which outline two Salesforce investments and how they affect the business, as well as how they impact some of the ratios that I've mentioned. Thanks for listening and I hope now you've got a better understanding of the financial position of Salesforce.